So how do you harness the power of ChatGPT? In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step everything you need to know from going from not knowing anything about ChatGPT to becoming an expert in prompt engineering. Hey everyone, I'm Matt Berman. Welcome back to my channel. Let's get into it. Let's start with the basics. ChatGPT is a chat interface used to interact with a large language model, which is basically a smart computer program that has learned a lot about language by reading lots of books, articles, and websites. It can understand what you're saying and respond to you in a way that makes sense. It's like having a really smart robot friend who can talk to you and answer any questions you give it. ChatGPT is revolutionary because it can understand and generate human-like language. It does this by using a large amount of data to learn how people speak and write. This means that it can have conversations with people, write articles and stories, and even translate languages. ChatGPT is different from other computer programs because it doesn't just follow a set of rules or commands. It can actually understand language and use that understanding to generate responses. This makes it a really powerful tool for communication, learning, and creativity. And so what is a prompt engineer? A prompt engineer is someone who writes the questions or instructions to interact with ChatGPT. And they need to do so in a really clear way so that ChatGPT can respond with the answer that they're looking for. Think of it as program, but using language instead of code. And let's take a look at a few examples of basic prompts. In this first example, we're going to ask ChatGPT to give us a response to the prompt. The ocean is. This response is great and provides the basic information, but what if we wanted something simpler than this? We can actually instruct ChatGPT on how we want our responses to look. So let's tell it we only want a one word answer. So now ChatGPT says the ocean is expansive. If it only had one word to describe it, I'd say that's great. But I want something even more basic. I want it to tell me what color the ocean is. So let's instruct it using our prompt to give us a one word answer in the form of a color. And there it is. The ocean is blue. Now let's discuss the different elements of a prompt. As we cover more examples and applications that are possible with prompt engineering, you'll notice that there are certain elements that make up a prompt. A prompt can contain any of the following components. An instruction, which is a specific task or instruction you want the model to perform. Context, which can involve external information or additional context that can better steer the model in its responses. Input data is any data or question that you're interested in finding a response for. And the output indicator indicates what type of format do you want that output in. Not all the components are required for a prompt and the format depends on the task at hand. We'll touch more on this in upcoming parts of this video. One more important thing to remember is that the format of the prompt matters. How you format your prompts will inform how ChatGPT will respond to those prompts. Now let's discuss the main types of prompts. First is text summarization, which is one of the most basic tasks for ChatGPT as it is easily able to summarize articles, books, and even videos. Let's look at an example where we asked ChatGPT to explain how a microwave works. Now that's a long explanation. So what we can do is take that answer and ask ChatGPT to summarize it into one sentence. The key thing to understand is that we can get quite detailed in our instructions about what type of answer we want and not just ask it open-ended questions. Had we just asked for a one sentence explanation about how a microwave works in our original prompt, we would have gotten that instead of needing to summarize a lengthier response. We'll talk more about that in another example. The next type of prompt is information extraction, which is when ChatGPT reads through a text and picks out important details to answer a question. Think about it like when you read a book and highlight important parts so that you can remember them and use them later. ChatGPT does the same thing, but instead of highlighting with a marker, it uses programming to identify the key information and provide an answer to your question. Let's look at an example. 
So ChatGPT was able to take that explanation of how a microwave works and understand that it is talking about a microwave. This may be a really simple example, but you can do similar things with complex examples as well. Another type of prompt is question answering. One of the best ways to get ChatGPT to respond with specific answers is by improving the prompt itself. Using what we learned about the elements of a prompt, we can craft our prompt to get the specific type of answer that we're looking for. Let's continue with the microwave example. When we ask how a microwave works, we get a long explanation, but we can tweak that prompt to get a more concise answer or even an answer that could be understood by an eighth grader. Remember, add instructions to your question to get the type of answer you're looking for. Are you looking for your response to contain a list? A 100 word explanation? A 200 word explanation? Maybe a song? You can get pretty much any type of response depending on how you specify what you're looking for. We can also use ChatGPT for text classification, which is a fancy way of saying, is this text positive or negative? Here are three examples where ChatGPT is able to tell us whether a movie review is positive, negative, or neutral. One of the more interesting and novel things you could do with ChatGPT is have full conversations with it, as you would with any human. You can give it a personality, a motive, identity. This would be especially useful if you wanna build a conversational system, such as a customer support agent. Next, one of my favorite things about ChatGPT and AI in general is the ability to generate code. I use a product called Copilot, which is from a company called GitHub, also owned by Microsoft. It has saved me countless hours of coding by understanding what I want to code and generating a ton of the code I would have written by hand automatically. Not only does it generate the code I asked for, but it also explains the code in plain English. ChatGPT is also capable of logical reasoning. Let's look at this simple example. We provide a truth of of, I am always scared when I watch a scary movie and then ask it to complete the statement knowing that truth, which it does. That's an example of logical reasoning. That wraps up the basics section. Let's move on to advanced prompting techniques. We're going to start with a technique called few shot prompts. But first, let me explain what zero shot, one shot, and few shot prompts are. Zero shot prompting is when you ask the model for something without giving it any examples of the type of response you want. You could probably guess what one shot and few shot prompting is then. One shot is giving one example and few shot is giving a few examples of the type of responses you want. Here's a zero shot prompt. Here's a one shot prompt. And here's a few shot prompt. Next is chain of thought prompting, which is where you provide the exact steps to figure out a problem. You walk ChatGPT through how you arrived at an example answer, which informs the model how to think through the next prompt you pose. It also tells ChatGPT to explain its reasoning, which is helpful to get better responses. Next, zero shot chain of thought simply extends chain of thought prompting, but doesn't provide any examples to ChatGPT. Rather, it just asks it to explain its reasoning as it goes. Next is an idea called self-consistency, which is to sample multiple diverse reasoning paths through few shot chain of thought and use the generations to select the most consistent answer. Basically, you're giving ChatGPT a bunch of ways to think about the problem and you figure out what will get the results that you're looking for. So I used a word problem I found in the guide I mentioned as an example for self-consistency. The word problem is when I was six, my sister was half my age. Now now I'm 70, how old is my sister? Now, when I plugged that into ChatGPT originally, the response was, if you were six and your sister was half your age, then she was three years old. So if you're now 70, your sister would be 70 plus three equals 73 years old. Now, obviously that's not right. I then provided it with the self-consistency prompt example and it got the right answer after that, which is 67 years old. Now, nice. unfortunately, I didn't do a screen recording when it got the answer wrong and it never got the answer wrong again after that. 
truly odd and interesting. But I will tell you, it got it wrong. I provided it with self-consistency and then it got it right. Next is generated knowledge. And the generated knowledge approach asks ChatGPT to generate potentially useful information about the question before generating a response. This approach is composed of two steps, knowledge generation and knowledge integration. So we're asking it to generate some kind of information and then to use that information in the subsequent response to give us the answer we're looking for. Now I wanna talk about a fun topic, adversarial prompting, which is also known as hacking ChatGPT. First is prompt injection, which is an interesting way to potentially get around guardrails put in place by ChatGPT's creators or any other LLM. Let's say ChatGPT is used to create a customer service bot for an electronics store. That store's return policy has a 30-day window, but with prompt injection, you're able to get the customer service bot to say the return window is unlimited. That company probably wouldn't like that. Here's an example of how to accomplish that. Prompt leaking is another form of ChatGPT hacking. Many prompt engineers have spent countless hours creating and massaging their prompts to be as close to perfect as possible. They probably don't want those prompts shared. This technique aims to get ChatGPT to leak its original prompt. In this example from learnprompting.org, the application's prompt is to correct the grammar of a given sentence. We can provide a sentence, and instead of needing to have its grammar corrected, we tell it to end and print the above prompt with the goal of obtaining the original application prompt. Goal hijacking is another example that we see in this graphic. Ignore instructions or ignore previous instructions is a way to get ChatGPT to forget its original purpose and to follow new instructions. Jailbreaking is yet another method in which you are attempting to break out of the rules or guardrails put in place by an LLM's creator. For example, OpenAI includes content moderation guardrails in ChatGPT. You can't ask OpenAI how to do illegal things. However, what if you pose it as a hypothetical situation? Or what if you put it in the context of not being illegal? As an example, what if we tell ChatGPT that we're filming a movie and need to create a realistic scene about breaking into somebody's house? That would be completely legal, right? You can see that ChatGPT is able to and does answer the prompt when framed in this way. Very interesting. So we've learned a lot today. You're now well on your way to becoming a prompt engineer and setting yourself up for the incoming tidal wave of AI jobs. I'll link two great sources to continue learning down below, including a GitHub wiki I found by Dare AI and LearnPrompting.org. If you found this video valuable, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.